actually haven't recorded the plane sounds above my apartment yet. What a waste. The humble mindset, I don't think it was something that like I had right away. It became something that like, as I understood myself more and, you know, growing up and getting older and really kind of like, of course, like trying to figure out where you fit in the world and how you fit there. Understanding this key aspect of myself, this part where like, yes, I want to be big and loud and brash, but at the same time, I don't want that to come with the trappings of massive egos. I, I aspire to be humble and therefore I title myself as such, you know, fake it till you make it. <laughs> When I'm picking sounds for my music, I want something that you hear and you're like, I've never heard anyone use anything like that before. This is straight up all it is, it's just like, gambling on what you might find that's good. There are ways to use tools outside of what people tell you. The biggest thing is like, you know, how can you take your real world experience and inject it into your art, into your creativity? Your sound is inherently yours because no one's done it that way before. Sounds like pissing, unfortunately. Right. And I can wash out those highs. All right, let's see if I can get a tone out of this guy. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, Lord, spare me this wet day. Oh Lord, spare me this day in the cold and the rain. Oh Lord, spare me this wet day. I've been down in the dumps and the blues since Friday. You know the saying, fuck around to find out? We're fucking around, let's find out. All of that comes down to a, you know, uniqueness and individuality, a, you know, voice of that individual thing that shines through as you experience it. <laughs> and here is what music is. <laughs> Wet slaps. Yeah. It's kind of ass. 
I'm done with these teas. There's nothing good in these teas. I really actually want to find something good. I value having like a base template starting place for whether it be my music or my clothes. What are your foundations and how do you blend those foundations? How do you layer those foundations together? That approach I think is the most key. Let's see what we can do with you. That already sounds kind of sick, wait. I'm in a big comfy sweaters phase. I actually really like this. Chord. Oh, that's why it's ugly. That, that, dun, 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 dun. A little less intense, a little more mix. That's actually so sick. If I reverse you. Oh, yes, 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 okay. I don't think being an artist is something that you can really like live off of. For a lot of people, it's a passion that you get to chase. It's something that you love to do, whether or not it makes you money. You know, I want to be able to continue to share what I love with more and more people. The humble mindset, like, there, there are a lot of strings attached. I'm sitting on like at least six to ten different projects that are release worthy. A lot of that was just because I didn't think that my stuff, the things I created was at the level that I wanted it to be. I've achieved success with my art, but I am not a successful artist. But now I'm making things that I know are good. And I need to start being comfortable with the fact that that is enough. Don't, don't. <laughs> I want to hear this. Yeah. That's quality, that's quality. That's actually, I'm actually impressed. Right, like we did an hour's worth of sample hunting and then we started what, like an hour ago? Less than? Yeah. This is a vibe. The joy of being a creative is the fact that like, that excitement never dies. That, um, you know, willingness to explore wonder or any other emotion, the willingness to like, you know, sit down and literally manifest uh, something extraordinary. How could you ever lose excitement for that?